All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Denali uh, weekly webinar. We're currently starting our new series from receiving to selling. Uh, today's webinar is going to be about inventory maintenance. So welcome today. Uh, my name is Jeremy Beisline. I am a trainer here at Cougar Mountain Software, and I will be your presenter here today. Uh, we ask that you, if, if you have any questions or comments, we ask that you put those in the chat uh, we, uh, and keep your mic muted throughout the presentation. We do have quite a bit to cover today in just a short time, so in order to get through it all, we're going to try to keep this a uh, little bit more formal and uh, put your questions or comments in the chat, and at the end of the webinar, I will address the questions uh, to try to get those answers out to you before we're done. Okay, so today we're going to be talking about Denali Inventory Maintenance, uh, some of the advantages of using the Denali Inventory Module rather than using uh, like a spreadsheet or Excel or trying to do it all by hand or by paper. Uh, that'll be our first topic is the maintenance. The second uh, topic is inventory setup. Then we'll go on to inventory security and control. And then we'll talk about how the other modules in Denali integrate to the inventory module to keep everything automated for you on maintaining your inventory count and quantity. And then we'll cover the report options and we'll go ahead and wrap it up at the end with a Q&A session. Okay, so with that we'll go ahead and get started. All right, so the big question comes up uh, for most businesses in our training. Uh, we always ask, what is the, the biggest expense for your business? Uh, most most of our trainees that we're, we're talking about, a lot of them will raise their hand and they'll say, uh, well, the payroll is our biggest expense. Uh, however, for most businesses, actually the biggest expense is your cost of goods sold. Uh, that's the number one expense for most companies and that expense is controlled and managed through inventory. So that's what today's webinar will be all about, uh, inventory maintenance and how Denali handles that for you. Um, if you're using other options such as Microsoft Excel or some other uh, by hand method to try to track your inventory, there's a lot of chances for errors. Uh, the system is not automated like it is in a, an inventory system like we have with Denali. Uh, with Excel, you don't have the, the automation of inventory. Whenever you sell items, you have to manually go into your spreadsheets and remove the items you sold reduce the quantity. Uh, when you receive items in, you have to go in and manually add those items into the quantity. Uh, uh, there's, that leaves the possibility and potential open for lots of different errors uh, that can pop up, which is where you lose control over the cost of goods of your business. That's where you are not able to track those cost of goods as, as efficiently as if you had an inventory management system. So here at Cougar Mountain, we have designed a great inventory management system to go along with your other Cougar Mountain software packages, uh, the Denali Inventory Module. Uh, with the Inventory Module, it's very extensive, it's very complete and very thorough. Uh, there's a lot of information you can set up about each item, but at the same time, we've also kept it open for you to keep things simple so that it's very easy to manage and maintain your inventory and yet still keep complete control over your cost of goods expense. So with your inventory setup in Denali, we'll go ahead and switch over to the Denali screen here for our inventory. There we have it. This is the Denali inventory module here. Uh, basically, if you're used to working with a simple system, uh, one of the first things our clients sometimes see when they open up the inventory item maintenance screen is all of this information you can put in about a single item. Uh, that is only there to give you the power and functionality of maintaining and managing your inventory control. But at the same time, you don't have to fill everything in. Basically, all you need to do to set up an inventory item is an inventory number, which if you've got a barcode scanner, you just scan in the UPC code and that could be the number for that item. Uh, and then of course you attach it to a category. We call the categories here inventory codes. These are our different categories we have for what item this belongs under. The codes are set up as the link to the general ledger module to determine what balance sheet uh, inventory asset account 
to track all of these items under that code in. Then you put in your item description. Uh, then basically all, the only thing that's really required to set up the item is a selling price and recommended putting in your cost of the item. Now the cost does not actually have to be put in when you first set up the item because as you receive those items in, Denali will automatically update that last cost. But your selling price, you're going to want to put that in. And then that's it. Um, if you have the general ledger module, we recommend also using uh, the revenue account for the sale of this item and putting that in here as well. So all of these other fields that you have available to you are optional fields, but they also open up the possibility of some great functions and features of, that you get by managing and maintaining your inventory items. Um, some of the other fields you have is to set up automatic ordering through minimums and maximums, and these other fields automatically uh, update for you as you are receiving and selling the inventory items. Uh, you can also set up different pricing conversions. Another advanced feature that you have in Denali, which you have to create a special formula in Excel or some other system to set those up, but Denali does the formula for you just by putting in the factor here. Uh, but one thing that's great about Denali is you can set retail pricings in five different levels based on quantity or just based on a specific level for a customer type, for example. And what's great about that is these prices are automatic that you sell the item for when the customer is brought up on the sales screen in the sales module. This number that you have the selling price in will automatically carry over to the sales screen. Uh, Another advanced feature you have with Denali is you can use margin or markup pricing. So with margin and markup pricing, you would put a percentage in. And what's great about that is, is if we do, for example, a 50% mar mar margin, profit margin on level one, 45% uh, on level two, 40 on three, uh, 32 on four, and 25 on level five. We've just set up five different tiers of pricing for this same item based on a customer type, such as wholesalers, contractors, and so forth, that you can determine what those levels represent. Level one will always represent the standard retail price. But by putting the percentages in here, Denali automatically takes the last cost of the item that's entered here or automatically updated when you're receiving the item, and it recalculates the retail price for you. So that is a great feature you have in Denali to recalculate that retail price. And what's great about this is because Denali is integrated with the other modules, when you sell these items, these prices are automatic. You don't have to type in the price manually on a cash register system or an order entry system like you would if you had some other inventory control screen. So you just put in your margin percentages here, and this will calculate the profit margin if it's sold under this level, uh, and it'll give you the retail price to give you that profit margin percentage. As you can see, if our cost is $100, and we want a 50% profit margin when we sell this item, we must sell it at $200 retail price to get that 50% profit margin, and so forth. Uh, you can choose markup pricing. So now markup pricing, it just takes the last cost and it multiplies it by the percentage and adds that to the last cost to mark it up to get you your retail price, which you can see those numbers, the example of how that works here with markup pricing. So these are some of the advanced features in Denali. Uh, you can also do additional features in your inventory item maintenance, such as setting up a discount code that automatically calculates putting in a special catalog number that might be different than your UPC number that you can use in the sale of the item. You can set up product types, different size options and weight options. You can also add a non-inventory charge such as a shipping and handling or assembly charge to the item if needed. Uh, there's a lot of options you can add to the Denali inventory module that you don't have with the by hand or the Excel feature to help you maintain control over your inventory. Uh, you, Denali also has great feature, advanced features to uh, use serial numbers for this item. 
or to add this item to lot numbers. You can uh, use lot numbers for certain items as well. And lot numbers will allow you to put in an expiration date for that lot as well. Serial numbers will track each individual item that you sell by the serial number. Okay, so that is the inventory setup. And when you set up an item, let's bring up an example of one we have here. No, I don't want to save changes. Oh, I didn't even talk about the picture. We also can put a picture for the item. And look at that, there's Kevin's car. <laughs> the back end of his car. <laughs> All right, Kevin, he's our other trainer here, and, and he also produces the uh, PowerPoint presentations for these webinars, so we always like to shout out a kudos to Kevin. So. But he put in his picture of his car for this item, so. Uh, but you can put in the picture of what the item is, and uh, then that way you can track. Here's another picture, and that's an actual chair with no arms, so that one's probably more accurate to what this item really is. And when you're selling these items, if those pictures are put in, then uh, you can bring up that image on the sales screen so that you can see what it is you're selling. So it's a pretty nice uh, option you have there with the Denali inventory module. Okay, so these are the different uh, items we have set up in our inventory module. The notes, uh, we've got several vendors you can set up for this item. So moving on, we'll go ahead and uh, talk about the Denali security control. Um, in most other applications, if you do inventory by hand, you basically have to lock up your ledger books or your inventory charts or however you do it in the office somewhere if you don't want others to have access to those. If you're using Microsoft Excel, you can lock up the spreadsheet so that other users can only read the spreadsheet, read only, or not have access to it at all. However, in Denali, with the Denali security features, you can set up different users to have all of the different options in the inventory module. And as you can see, we've got several different options that you can look at here. Uh, there's all of these different options that you can select that this user has the right to do. You might not want the user to change the item setup, but they might need to have access to change the quantity as needed. So in that case, we would not let them add or edit stock records, but only view stock records, and then update the quantities as needed. So you can definitely set that up. Uh, you can set up the user to allow them to adjust quantities, enter transactions for adjusting quantities, uh, and so forth. So you can select many different options in the user rights uh, to maintain security and full control over your inventory. Only give the users the right that you need. Okay, so the Denali security is very safe and sound and it's a lot more advanced than just a simple inventory system like Microsoft Excel or by hand. So that is definitely the key feature there. Uh, but now, how does this all work? What is the advantage of having the inventory module and putting in all these advanced settings and features and, and options about each item into the inventory module for the item? What is the advantage of all that? Well, the biggest advantage you're going to find is, is when you're actually dealing with inventory items through transactions, Denali inventory is, of course, fully integrated with all of the other modules as needed. So when you go into the purchase order module here and you order inventory items, uh, let's bring up a purchase order here. We're going to go ahead and bring up one of our items to order here. Let's grab that one. That's a good one here. You notice, let's look at that again real quick. You notice this item right here that we have 107 available on hand. And if we look at the item information here, we've got... Uh, Five on order, 107 available. Uh, we don't have any on layaway or any committed or anything like that, none on back order. So keep an eye on that uh, and remember the number. We have 107 available, 107 quantity on hand. So let's go ahead and let's order 25 more of these. Okay, and we're going to say, yeah, that works. Uh, 
discount type, make sure we put in our freight added $1 so we can make sure everything's taken care of there. Another thing I wanted to point out on this item is our last cost of $47. Let's keep an eye on that as well. Last cost for, oh, we have it on our screen right here, perfect. <laughs> Uh, we'll talk more about how the purchase order system works uh, on the next webinar, so make sure you come back for that. But uh, basically, to place this order, we're going to set this up. Oh, we need a vendor, don't we? So let's see, what are the vendors we order from? Uh, our primary vendor is Harris Office, so we'll go ahead and choose Harris Office for our vendor here. Okay, so now we have our vendor number, put in our item number here, and we've got a vendor stock number as well. Pops in automatically based on the vendor that we're ordering from. Okay, so we've now ordered 25 more of those items. So let's take a look at that item now that we were just ordering. There's our item right here, and we have Let's see, did I save that purchase order? Double check here, I probably changed it to one is the problem. I was looking at the on order and it shows six instead of five that I had before, so let's bring up our purchase order and see what happened. Yeah, it changed to one because I clicked on it again, so we're gonna change that to 25. Very good. Okay, so we had five on order before, but now we bring up our item. We should have 30 on order, and look at that. There we go. So as you can see, Denali automatically updates these numbers for you. You don't have to go in and record manually in your Excel spreadsheet or your ledger book or somewhere that you've now ordered 25 more of these or how many you have currently on order. It's important to keep track of that because you need to compare what you have available with what's on order to determine if you need to order more. If we've got 30 on order, we might not need to order any more. Of course, we had 107, so we probably didn't need to order any anyway, but for today's example, we went ahead and did that. So now, a few days later, here comes the shipment of our office chairs that we just ordered, our 25 office chairs. So now we're going to enter the receiving transaction. And again, this is all fully integrated, so it's much easier to track everything through your uh, Denali inventory module by having all of your other modules integrated with inventory. So we have our 25 items here. We're going to go ahead and receive all items. We're going to change the freight amount to uh, $75. And by doing that, we're going to land our freight so that that is included in the cost of the item. So our landed unit cost is now 44103032. Now remember, our last cost was $41. Let's bring up the item again. $47, that's what the last cost was. So the price went down a little bit, look at that. Purchase order. Actual cost was 4130. And the landed cost is 44.1032, which includes the freight charge. So per unit, it divides that freight by each one of the 25 units to include that. And the thing that's nice about that is that's part of your cost of goods sold expense now. The freight is included in that because uh, freight is an expense that has to be expensed out as part of your cost of goods sold. Oh, yeah, we need an invoice number. Got to put the invoice information. And we have the date, the due date, tax is zero, freight is 75. We are good to go. All right. Okay, so now we have received our, our inventory. If we wanted to print the stock labels, view the receiving report, view our edit report, we can. But let's go ahead and post the receiving transaction. So remember, we had 107 available, 30 on order. But now we've just received 25. So here's what we have. Uh, 
Okay. So here's our receiving report for receiving 25 of these items, total receipt, total invoice. So we have this, uh, this transaction posted to the purchase order module here. Now this is the integration right here. We don't have to go into Excel and update the quantity to add 25 to our inventory. Denali automatically did that for us. And it also put in the cost that it received those at, 441030. And so we added to inventory automatically. Here is a report showing what Denali just did at the posting to our inventory. And then, of course, our last posting report is, oh, we still got two more, accounts payable. Uh, integration is also set to accounts payable. So this is the invoice posting to the accounts payable module for our vendor, Harris Office, for this invoice for those items. Then we have our general ledger posting here, debits and credits. So we credit the accounts payable account for the liability for the invoice, and we debit the inventory asset account, as you can see here, for the items we just received. Okay, so let's take a look at our item again. Remember our last cost was $47. We had 107 available. Look at that. Our last cost has now been updated to 441030. And if we were using margin or markup pricing, it would automatically update our selling price based on that as well. And our available is now 132. Our quantity on hand is 132. We still have the five on order originally because there's a previously entered purchase order we have not received yet. So that's still five, but what that went from 30 back down to five now that we've received those. So all of this inventory maintenance happens automatically for you in receiving the items. So now here comes our customers, and we're going to sell the items to our customers here. So we're going to log into our cash register here, and order entry works the same way. Uh, let's grab one of our customers here, Boyer Thrift Shop. We'll sell three of our items to Boyer Thrift Shop here. And there's our selling price. And we'll let them bill it to their account. Oh, this customer is past due, override required. <laughs> you have insufficient rights to save a charge for past due customers. So my customer is past due and we have not allowed this customer. So let's sell them to another customer. Are they past due? Boy, we're all past due, aren't we? <laughs> okay, here's a customer that has a zero balance. We'll sell it to that customer. That makes it a little easier for us. Okay, so now we're going to sell our three items here. Notice this service item popped in automatically. Uh, the reason why is because on this item here, we have added another one of the advanced features of Denali Inventory. We have added a non-inventory service code that charges our customers when they purchase this item. You use that for like assembly charges or shipping and handling or whatever you need to use that for. So here we go. We'll go ahead and sell it to this customer. AR charge. And we don't need to print it. So there we go. We just sold three of our chairs now to this customer, but we haven't posted it yet. But even though it's not posted yet, because Denali Inventory keeps track of your inventory in real time, as you can see, here's the three we have sold. So our available amount has now been reduced by three. It's 129 instead of the 132. After we post, the committed will post through to the on-hand quantity to subtract that three from our on-hand amount. So as you can see, Denali keeps track of all of this for you on the fly automatically. So you don't have to go through and manually take those items out of your inventory when you're ready to sell or when, you're up, when you do sell the items. So let's go ahead and balance our register. We've got $150 in cash so that we can post this transaction and show you how that works. Okay, so again, now we've sold the three items, so what we're going to see here are the posting reports. 
that update our inventory count, updates the accounts receivable for the customer we sold them to, and all the information as you can see here. Here's the sales history for the items we sold to that customer. And then we have our accounts receivable posting to update the customer's balance for this invoice. And then we have our inventory. And as you can see here, Denali automatically subtracts from inventory the three quantity we just sold. And look at the, uh, the unit cost. That, that wasn't our selling price. That was the unit cost that we received them at because now that has to be subtracted out of the value of our inventory. So this amount has now been, as you can see in our general ledger posting here, oh, we have a sales tax posting to accounts payable. There's the sales tax to our sales tax vendor. And then we have our general ledger posting. So now we're going to get a credit posting to the inventory account here. Where is it? Here we go. For the 123, there's our credit posting for removing those items out of inventory. And where does the debit go? It goes to our cost of goods sold expense. We have now just sold those items, so that's when they get expensed out at the time of sale. And then, of course, we have our debit for the revenue or the, the amount that we're to collect for these items. Here's the revenue for the selling price, and here's the credit to the taxes payable for the sales tax. So with the inventory module, all of that information is handled for you automatically in the process. And there's no need to update things manually. Now once things are handled for you, Denali also has some great reporting options on the inventory. You can do uh, reports to determine how much you have on hand, what your stock value is. You can do uh, reports for items that you are understock on or overstock on, below certain quantities, items on order, back order. These are all inventory maintenance reports that you can run. And just to kind of get an idea of some of those reports here, our on hand report shows you a list of all items and the amount we have on hand, on order. These are all the examples of the inventory maintenance to help you uh, keep track of your inventory quantity a little easier just by running these simple reports. Uh, and with Excel, you have to create formulas and columns and uh, all kinds of different strategies to create these reports, whereas with Denali, you've got all of these reports already set up and ready to go for you. Uh, but then you've got your inventory transaction reports, your history, monthly movement reports, advanced sales info, promotional sales, and so forth. But the monthly movement report, that one is a great report to show a detailed item, or a detailed report of the items that you are selling. So we're going to run this report for the item we've been working with, our leather chair with no arms. And this is uh, an example of this report. So it gives you all of the detailed information for what happened with the movement of this item in and out of your inventory. So as you can see, you've got uh, beginning quantity, and then you've got quantity in, and we are in the 20th period right here. This is the period we're working in right here. So here was our beginning quantity at the beginning of the period. Here's how many we received. That was our purchase order. Here's how many we sold so far. And now here's our ending quantity. And this is the percentage of movement, the value of the quantity in, cost of goods sold per unit, and total, this is the basically selling, this is the total of the three we sold, this is the per unit cost of goods, price per unit, sales revenue, the uh, um, inventory turnover rate ratio, and then you have your profit margin. All of this on this nice neat report for this one item that we're looking at here. So this is a very detailed report for each of your stock items that you can look at if you are concerned about the specifics of a specific item. So that is uh, another advantage of having the Denali inventory module. All of your reporting options. But the biggest thing is, is it's all completely integrated and automated to keep track of your inventory for you. You don't have to manually deduct quantities and add quantities as you run the regular flow of your business. All right, so 
with that, we will switch back over to our presentation here. And jump ahead. Yeah, there's our There's our movement report we were just looking at there. Okay. So that is uh, pretty much the webinar. Uh, the Denali Inventory Module has some great options and features to help you manage, maintain, and control your inventory as you run the regular operations of your business. So with that, we'll open it up for questions. Um, we'll talk about the upcoming webinar in just a moment here. So give me just one moment here and I'll pull up the questions here. Okay, question from George. Can you put in an animated GIF for a picture with multiple views of an item? Uh, right now, the, the pictures that you can use are any uh, image file in the Denali inventory module. However, the animated pictures, I don't think those work at this time. Uh, that is something when you're adding an image to the inventory item under the sales info tab, this is where you set the image. And basically what it's looking for is uh, image files is what you, you can put in there for that. So um, the image viewer though is designed specifically for still image and it doesn't allow for multiple views either. You can set uh, any additional images you want, but you have to set a specific image that pops up by default. And it replaces the previous image when you do. So that is currently the image feature you have in Denali. Okay, so now this is a good question from George. What is the procedure on changing standard cost changes? So what you're referring to, George, there is the valuation method, which is set up on the inventory codes. Remember, that's our categories. So our valuation method, we got one here for electric items. Uh, you can set FIFO, LIFO, weighted average, or standard cost. So whatever you set for the valuation method here, then that determines how Denali will expense those items when you sell them for cost of goods sold. Um, also, it will determine how they're received as well. Whenever you receive items, the transactions are saved in the cost quantity table, as you can see here. So if we go down here to the bottom, we'll see the one we received today. And this is the per unit cost we received those items in at on this transaction that came in today. That's our per unit cost. Now, since we're at FIFO, it just updates the last cost for that to update your pricing. Uh, but the standard cost is zero. So now when we sell the item with FIFO, it looks at the oldest transaction to determine what to expense it out as. Uh, LIFO will look at the newest transaction to determine what to expense it out of the cost of goods sold. Weighted average, what you would see here is a weighted average combined total of all of these transactions. Instead of each individual transaction, you would see just one line item here with a weighted average of all the transactions. So now the big question is, is what about standard cost? Well, standard cost allows you to manually set what you want to expense the items at when you sell them, rather than going with what you actually paid for those items. So that is how the standard costing method works. To change that standard cost on your items, you have to go into the item maintenance here and manually change that number right there. So with standard cost, that's where you would update the standard cost, is just by going in and changing that number for each of the items that you need to change that to. Okay, um, another question. George is asking if we're going to review the pricing options, which is one of the power features of Denali. Uh, yes, that's what we were talking about on setting up your pricing options here, markup, margin, uh, the different options you have and it automatically will update the price based on the last cost. If you're using standard cost, the price will be based on the standard cost. If you're using the standard cost of the valuation method. Um, Amy says, what if freight is collected to our FedEx account and is separate? How do we get that shipping cost into our cost per item? 
Very good question, Amy, and that is a question we will cover with our next webinar when we go into the specifics of purchase order, because that is all handled in the purchase order module. So be sure to come back uh, two weeks from today at the same time, and I'll be sure to get that question answered for you, because Denali will definitely do that for you. Uh, George says, can we set a price book for a customer? Uh, price book is uh, a feature that you can run as one of your reports here. Uh, the price book, though, it basically asks you which price level do you want to print. Remember our five price levels for the items. And if we want to print for a specific customer that's, say, on level three, we'll just go ahead and print the price book using pricing level three. So, yes, you can do that. How do you get information on back orders and committed items? The reports only give you the part number and how many are on back order. There's no way to find out what PO has a back order. Some things were committed. We have numbers uh, numbers in those boxes, but do not show a PO with back orders, so we cannot figure out why that item is showing a back order. Uh, yes, uh, that is a good question there by Francis Smith. Um, what happens is, is the, the committed, the back order, all of these numbers are automatically updated based on the transactions as they're posted. Committed and layaway are going to be handled from the sales module. Um, back order is also handled from sales. The on order is the only one updated from purchase order. But as you can see, if for some reason a purchase order gets deleted or cleared from a batch and it does not automatically correct the on order amount, you can always change that manually here in the Denali. Uh, inventory item maintenance. So you can correct these on order, back order, committed numbers manually if needed. And then they automatically will update from there going forward. Okay. All right. So now there's a few more questions on here, and we will have to uh, cut it short. We've already run out of time. Uh, by about five minutes. We're seven minutes over, actually. So what I'm going to do is I am going to uh, make sure that the answers to your questions come out when we post the webinar on the website. Uh, George had a really good one. He wanted me to demo the multi-units of measure. That's also going to be discussed in the purchase order and sales uh, webinars because those are set up for purchase orders and sales. Uh, so be sure to come back for that next week. and the, Not next week, but uh, two weeks from now and then the three weeks from now for the sales. And we'll go into more specifics on how to enter purchase orders, how to create purchase orders, ne the next webinar and the one after that. We'll go into more specifics on the sales module on selling your inventory items. So be sure to check back with us. This is actually a three-part series we're doing. Today is part one. So, so stay tuned for more. All right. And we'll be sure to get the questions posted um, on the website. I just want to show you real quick uh, the next webinar we have coming up here. Okay, so that, that's going to be July 22nd. That's the purchase order overview. July 29th is the invoicing in the sales module. We can do that through order entry or point of sale. And then going forward, we'll be moving on to our other webinar. So be sure to check out the website here for all of the webinars and make sure you register for the webinars so that you can go ahead and get uh, the information that you need from our webinars there. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, uh, be sure to contact your sales rep. Uh, there's the phone number there, 1-800-388-3038. You can also email sales at cougarmountain.com for additional information. And with that, I want to thank you all for coming today. It's been a great webinar. Uh, we kind of went over on our time. I do apologize. We'll try to stay within time next time a little better. Uh, but make sure you keep an eye out for follow-up emails, communications, and access to this recording on the website. After uh, a couple of days, it should be there. All right. Thank you very much. Have a great day, everyone, and we'll see you next time. Bye for now. <laughs>